Okay, let's talk about this interesting equation. So we have two to the x plus two to the x plus one is equal to 10. And of course, the objective in this video is to learn how to solve this type of equation. And this type of equation is uh, kind of covering a topic that you uh, might start being introduced, well, you'll definitely be introduced to it like in an algebra one level, first year algebra course. But uh, really to be able to solve this type of equation, you're going to um, uh, need to understand more advanced concepts, usually taught like an algebra two, maybe college algebra, intermediate algebra, certainly pre-calculus, these kind of level, kind of second year algebra courses or uh, more advanced courses like these. They're, you're gonna be basically learning the um, concepts and techniques to solve an equation like this. So if you haven't seen this before, if you're in a first year, like let's say like algebra one, stick around anyways, because this is going to be right around the corner. Also, what you're gonna to need to solve this equation, if you wanna try it, is a nice scientific calculator, okay? So we're gonna talk about exactly how to solve this. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give you a hint uh, kinda of as we start this problem on uh, to you know, kind of encourage you to complete it. So um, I would definitely you know, uh, suggest that you try to solve this problem in advance if you think you can do it. Put your answer into the comment section, but I'm gonna cover all this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for several decades. I'm telling you right now, all students can be successful in math. So if you're struggling in math, you know, maybe you're taking one of these more advanced math courses and you're like, I can't pass this. It's too much. It doesn't have to be, the, uh, be that way. Okay, I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in math, but it requires two things. One, you got to work really hard at it. So don't give up. Continue to work hard. The second thing you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, comprehensive. That's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. Also, if you um, are taking any sort of test with the math section, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, I have great middle and high school homeschool math courses. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel. That definitely helps me out big time. Okay, so let's get in to this particular equation. And again, it's a little bit more advanced than the stuff you're gonna see at Algebra 1. So let's first uh, talk about what type of equation is this? Well, let's first of all identify where is the variable uh, in uh, this particular equation. Well, if you notice, the variable is in the exponent uh, position, okay? So here, like let's say we have two to the third power, all right? So you need a real strong understanding of powers and exponents. This part is called the what? That's called the base. This is called the exponent, this little number. The whole thing it's, uh, in its entirety is a power. So this is two to the third power. This is the base. That little three up there would be the exponent. So we're trying to find the value of the exponent, or at least that's where the variable's at. It's in the exponent. So we would call this type of equation an exponential equation. Okay, so again, exponential equations, you get uh, introduced to them uh, at a basic level, like in algebra one. But uh, in order to solve an exponential equation, most more advanced uh, exponential, exponential equations like this, you're going to need something, uh, you need to uh, understand a concept called logarithms, okay? So that's what we're gonna be using. So when you have an exponential equation, you need to use logarithms because these functions are inverses of one another. And later, I'll do some additional videos. Matter of fact, I already have some on my YouTube channel. And of course, I teach this all super thoroughly in all my courses like Algebra 2, Pre-Calculus. But um, if you have a logarithmic equation, you're going to uh, use exponents to solve that. So just remember, exponential functions and logarithmic functions are inverses of one another. Okay, so lots of times students get confused about that. But, you know, you're like, okay, exponential function, you need to be thinking logarithms. So on your scientific or graphing calculator, you're going to be using this little button, that LOG button. There is another button you can use, the LN button. That's the natural logarithm. You could get the same answer using that, but you only want to really use that LN button when you're dealing with the base E. Okay, natural base E, that's a separate topic right there. But when you have problems involving that, you use the LN button. Uh, all other bases, just go ahead and use the common logarithm, the LOG button. Okay, so... This is kind of the setup for this problem, and I promised you a hint 
And here is the hint to kind of unlocking this problem. So we have two to the X plus two to the X plus one. So we're like, well, how do we kind of, you know, uh, deal with this? First of all, hopefully you already know how to solve a basic exponential equation, something like two to the X is equal to seven. Okay, so if you know how to solve this, well, then you're in good position for this particular problem. But the main idea was you, when we're solving exponential equations, you want to get your base and exponent on one side of the equation equal to a number. We want to try to get this equation cleaned up so we can get to this uh, point right here. Well, obviously we don't because we have the variable here and the variable over here in this expression. So what do we do? Well, you need to know these little techniques, little tricks, if you will, um, to kind of manipulate this problem such that we can kind of, you know, move forward. And you want to be using the properties of powers and exponents. So this is the one here that you can use to manipulate this, to rewrite it in a different way, such we can kind of uh, unlock um, this problem and get it in a position where we can, you know, get it something like this. Okay, so this property, hopefully you're familiar to it, when you're multiplying uh, two powers with the same base, a to the m times a to the n, in other words, the bases are the same, that's equal to a to the m plus n. Okay, so you wanna be thinking this to deal with this. Okay, so you're like, hmm, what is this guy talking about? Maybe you're kind of like scratching your head. Well, I'm gonna show you exactly right now what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's what you wanna be thinking. So we have two to the x plus two to the x plus one. We need to do something with this right here. So what can we do? Well, if I'm thinking, well, two to the x plus one, I just added the exponents right here. This right here is where I add the exponents, right? But when do you add exponents? Well, when you have when you're multiplying powers that have the same base. So if I have two to the x plus one, maybe if I kind of reverse engineer this, that was two to the x times two to the first. Okay, so two to the x times two to the first would be equal to I'm going to add the exponents two to the x plus one. Okay, so you're like, oh, two to the x plus one. That came from the problem, or one of the ways that could have came from is if you had two to the x times two to the first. So what we're gonna do is replace this expression. Uh, we're gonna change this expression out right here with two to the x times two to the first, and that will help us unlock this problem. Okay, so hopefully you understood that because this is really key to moving this problem forward. So now let's go ahead and do that. All right, so. Here's our original equation, two to the x plus two to the x plus one. We're gonna substitute that with two to the x times two to the first. Okay, so this expression right here, because that is equal to the two to the x plus one. And I'm gonna do that because now I can factor out, okay, let's take a look at it right here. I can factor out what? Okay, a two to the x. Okay, this is a common factor, greatest common factor. So I can factor out a two x now let's look here, if I factor out a 2x, 2x times one gets me back to 2x, two to the x times two to the first gets me back to two to the x times two to the first. Okay, so using a distributive property, hopefully you're up to speed on your factoring skills, but this right here is what you wanna do. You wanna factor out to that two to the x. So now I have uh, one plus two to the first. Okay, great, what's two to the first? That's simply two, so it's two plus one, is three. Okay, so check this out. What we did here was kind of manipulate um, this equation, and now we have it written as two to the x times three, okay? And now we could just simply solve or isolate that two to the x by dividing both sides of the equation by three, and now I'm down to this lovely little uh, uh, exponential equation, two to the x is equal to 10 thirds. So this is very much like that more simpler form now you're ready to solve this equation, this exponential equation, by taking the log of both sides of the equation, okay? Now, if you are new to solving exponential equations, well, you wanna check out some of my additional videos on my channel about exponential equations, or again, maybe just check out my full uh, Algebra 2 course, pre-calculus course, you know, if you really wanna learn this. I have tons of example problems solved, uh, you know, basic to more advanced problems, but here, now we are in a position to take the logarithm of both sides. So if you know how to do that, go ahead and do that. Um, if you were like stumped on the first part of the problem, well, this is the second part of the problem. See if you can solve for X. And uh, of course, you're gonna need a calculator to do this. 
All right, so let's go ahead and do that now. So again, I'm gonna take the logarithm of both sides, the common log, L-O-G, and L-O-G, or the log of two to the X, when you do this, you need to know the properties of logarithms. And one of the properties of logarithms, it goes like this, log a to the n is equal to n log a. In other words, when I take the logarithm of a uh, of a power, the exponent here, I can drop in front of the logarithm. It's one of the most useful, well, they're all uh, useful properties, but this one you absolutely use all the time when you're solving exponential uh, equations. Okay, so what I'm saying is log 2 to the x, I could take this little, when I take the log of 2x, I can now put that x, that variable I'm trying to solve for in front of the log. So now I have x log 2, right? So this is this property right here. And don't be afraid of these logarithms here. Log 2 is just a decimal. You could just plug that into your calculator. It's just a number. Okay, so log, again, when you take the log, I take the log of both sides, log of 10 to, uh, over 3 is just a decimal. See, there's a decimal value. So x times some decimal is equal to another decimal. So how do I solve for x? Easy. I just divide both sides of the equation by log 2. Okay, so we get x is equal to log 10 uh, divided by 3 over log 2. Now, I'm going to make you, um, I'm going to make a strong suggestion to you is do all your work down to this. Don't do anything with your calculator until you get to this uh, final point. In other words, don't start taking logarithms right here. That's not, don't start going to your calculator and get decimals here, uh, at this point. Get down to this point and then type all this in into your calculator and you'll get your one decimal out. Okay, so wait till you've uh, solved this by hand, okay, with these expressions and you're going to get a long uh, decimal here. So we're just going to uh, um, give it approximation of 1.736. There's more uh, digits that go beyond that. But again, this is a pretty close approximation to the value of X. So X is approximately 1.736. Now, if you got this right, I'm going to go ahead and give you like a, wow, a super impressive happy face. That's really not a good happy face. Let's go ahead and do it like this. And an A plus a 100%. That's pretty impressive. But listen, how do you know you got the right answer here? Well, let's go ahead and just check this and see if this makes sense. You remember in mathematics, when you're solving equations, you can always check your solutions by what? Well, taking that um, solution and plugging it back in to the um, original equation and seeing if um, it's actually, you know, satisfies the equation. So what we're gonna do is plug in that X is equal to 1.736. We'll plug in that 1.736 right here for X, and then we'll plug it in right there for X. And right here, we're gonna have to add one to it. So let's go ahead and do this and see what we get. Okay, so here we have two to the 1.736. All right, let me go ahead and bring this up. Remember, we're just substituting this X with our solution and we'll see what happens here. Okay, so we have two to the 1.736. When you do this in your calculator, you're gonna get 3.3311. I guess, uh, again, I'm rounding off, but this is a pretty good decimal approximation for this. And then here you have two to the 1.736 plus one. So I got to add one to this. So this is really going to be two to the 2.736. Got to go into my calculator, evaluate that. I get 6.6622. Again, you know, these are good approximations. And when I add these two decimals, I get 9.9933, which is pretty close to 10. Again, the more decimals here, um, even in my answer, okay, the more accurate I make my answer, you know, more decimal points, I'll get better, more approximations, I'll get closer and closer and closer to 10, but you can see this is working out, okay, that this is a good solution for this equation. Okay, so if you understand this, right, that's uh, very, very good, right? Again, remember what we're talking about is a topic of basically exponential functions and logarithms. They are kind of taught in the same unit, same chapter, chapter because they are inverses of one another. Absolute critical math skill, especially for any of you out there that are at the Algebra 2, College Algebra, Intermediate Algebra, Pre-Calculus, you get it, uh, these type of levels of mathematics. So um, again, I would classify this problem as being like a medium level uh, problem, okay? Not the easiest, but definitely not the most challenging, but Again, don't forget about the properties of uh, powers and exponents to be able to deal with um, expressions like this. You know, that's why math is all interrelated. Okay, you may need to uh, use something that you um, were taught, you know, last year's math or several chapters ago 
uh, as the key to unlock your particular problem. So anyways, hopefully this video helps you out. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you need any more additional math help, three suggestions. One, I have a ton of uh, videos on my YouTube channel from basic math to calculus. Uh, the second thing is my math help program. I teach this stuff. This, this is where my best math help is going to be super comprehensively. And I also offer math notes, which you can find in the description of this video as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.